Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today we're going to be talking about uh, three ways that you can save CPU. Um, so first things first, uh, this is the largest file that I run uh, at, in Ableton, and this runs without giving me any problems, no dropouts, um, there are tracks, it's, uh, it's a quite robust um, setup. Um, and I'm, there are some specific reasons that it works um, that I would love to talk about. So first things first, let's talk about your preferences. There are two key things in here that we need to talk about. First of all, uh, we need to talk about the buffer size. If you are getting audio dropouts or you are getting um, uh, any type of craziness in your sounds, particularly when you're playing back keyboard sounds, increase your buffer size. What that is going to do is it's going to allow Ableton um, more time to think before it is required to play. Um, so you're giving Ableton a little bit more time for latency in exchange for the correct sound quality. Next is your sample rate. I have this at 4800. Um, most people that I know run it on 44.1. However, um, I don't have any issues with the sample rate. So I leave it. Um, you can decrease the sample rate if you so choose, and that will give you a little bit um, technically less quality sounding audio. Um, however, it will allow Ableton to produce the audio quickly, um, which is something that could be helpful if you're having issues with playback. Next thing that we need to talk about is where you store your files. So in this particular setup, I'm using um, some stuff from native instruments, um, from other third party uh, places, and they are all sample based. Um, I'm not actually running any um, synthesizers live, they're all uh, sampled through sampler or contact. Um, so the reality is those are huge files, those sounds that you're playing back. It is best to keep them on an external drive, preferably solid state. Um, so you'll see here it says location of user library. This is on my external drive. Um, so all of my samples live on the external drive and that's true of contact, um, my native instruments as well. All of those samples are on my external drive so that Ableton is not having to use the hard drive that it is installed on to also recall the sounds uh, that you're playing. Um, and it's a good idea as well, good form to just use it for your sample packs as well. Um, all right, let's also talk about splitting things up. So you can only have uh, one core per channel. So uh, for example, uh, let's take this piano track. Um, this is my contact uh, piano. Um, and I just have one instrument, right? Uh, same deal here, just one instrument. And that is allowing Ableton to dedicate an entire core of processing power just to the piano. Now, if I had an instrument rack here with 15 different instruments, they would all be processed by the same core, um, which is not great. We would rather spread them out, uh, and there's no reason that you can't do that. So I actually only have one instrument per channel strip here. Final thing to save CPU and keep your Ableton sets running smoothly is collect all and save. Um, now I have a video explaining this and there's a link to that in the details, but essentially what it does is it takes all of the files that you've created, all of the files that you're working with, and imports them into this actual live set so that you're not referencing external files while you're playing. So this is going to save you a lot of processing power and, and it's going to run at the speed that allows you to perform the way that your music is meant to be heard. Don't forget, for a full write-up of this, you can head over to my blog and there's a link in the comments below um, so that you can actually have a text version of this to work from while you are optimizing your live sets. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to Ableton, and especially if you're switching from MainStage, head over to my website at mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go to get your free copy of the Fast Track Patch List Guide today, which will have you up and running uh, with a MainStage style patch list in Ableton Live. And to stay up to date with all of our latest blog posts, be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here.